wish I knew it 30 years ago, <laughs> you know, in the way I know it now, but it's a journey to get there. And, you know, exactly. and I praise God and thank God for the way in which he's navigated me through all of the way th of life to get me to this place of, you know, joyfulness, really. The question was coming up. She was asking um, us to pray for somebody in, in, in tongues. And she hasn't got that gift. Mm. And she wonders if it's for everybody. Or uh, is it? doesn't everybody get the gift of speaking in tongues? She has travailed in the spirit for several hours with groanings. Mm. And the mature believer. Um, but she hasn't received the gift of speaking in tongues. So I said, oh, I'll ask about that. Because it seems like... It's such a necessary gift for building up your spirit. Mm. So why wouldn't the Lord give it to everybody? Surely it's available to everybody. And if not, why? what, what hindrances are there? Okay. Um, that's, it's an interesting question and quite a big question to answer in one sense. Because I've, I think a lot of our understanding of spiritual gifts comes from a perspective of what we read in the Bible in the early church. Um, rather than where we should be today in our relationship with God and our spirit becoming mature. And therefore, you wouldn't need the gift of tongues as I've known it in the past when your spirit can communicate with God. Um, that being said, you know, I've I've used the gift of tongues um, lots of different ways within my lifetime um having got baptized in the spirit back in 86 or so um and prayed for a lot of people that you know could speak in tongues um but i've moved my position away when i've understood the context of what paul was talking about in the early church and who he was talking to and when he was talking to them and you know he talked about those gifts being childish things um because we were not yet mature and the spirit was equipping people to become mature and if we learn to develop our spiritual senses then we can do all the things that the spirit equips us to do but without the spirit giving it as a gift that being said if you're not operating in that level of maturity then the gifts are very helpful so the spirit can still prompt us and help us, but I don't think it's the end of the story. It's sort of the beginning until we grow up. I do believe, therefore, that the gift of tongues um, is available to everybody. There may be reasons why people struggle with it through blockages or letting go of control of their soul and different reasons why they might struggle with with receiving that gift. Tongues really is the spirit communicating with God. Therefore, the spirit can communicate with God in English or any other language that you happen to speak. So there is the gift of like the speaking with the tongues of angels. But that doesn't mean that we're not inspired by the spirit to pray. And therefore, when we speak and pray to God in English, it could easily be the spirit moving us to pray. So that is just as much tongues as would be a tongue of an angel, because the, uh, in the bottom line, it's a communication with our spirit to God, not actually prophecy or anything else. So when I've heard tongues given in a church setting. And I've heard people interpret the tongues. I think probably of all the times I've heard that, I didn't believe that any, well, probably more than two of those interpretations were actually what the spirit, what person was saying. But what it was, was God's response to what they were saying in a prophetic way. So they might cry out to God and God responds and the person is hearing the response rather than the interpretation because they've misunderstood that tongues is God speaking to us? Well, it isn't. It's us speaking to God. And every occasion in the New Testament where you read them speaking to us, it was always them addressing God. 
not a prophetic word from God to us in another language. What would be the point of that? He could speak to us prophetically directly. So he doesn't need to speak it through a tongue. It's our spirit engaging with God. And it can help edify, build up. You know, I certainly teach a lot of how to develop that gift and use it to develop the ability to do multiple things at the same time. So I can speak in tongues while doing something else. I could speak in tongues in my mind while doing something else or even while speaking in the normal way. And therefore my spirit can be encouraged to continually be talking to God and communicating, which I think is really what we can live in a state of being where we're continually in relationship with God and connected fellowship wise in communion in which we're not communicating verbally, but we're communicating at a spirit to spirit level. And I think that's ultimately where we can be once we develop that spiritual uh, connection to God. And where I think 1 Corinthians six seventeen says where we're joined to the Lord, we're one spirit with him. And that union in the spirit does not necessarily need verbal communication. Hence, I can't remember the last time I prayed to God as a I'm talking to God and he's somewhere out there. I communicate to God all the time within as a communion in relationship. You know, I don't pray and I don't ask God for things. You know, I communicate and share my life and he shares his heart with me. That really, I think, is where God wants us to be. But starting with gifts can be a primer to help us move into that mature position. So that's really what I would say. I wouldn't encourage anyone to get hung up over the gift of tongues. The main thing is that their spirit is communicating at a level which is not just the soul level because the soul level can be very much self-centered and based on our needs, you know, and of course God knows our needs. And when we're in communion with him, we're open about everything in our lives and he knows and shares his heart with us. Um, so if someone thinks they can't speak in tongues, I always encourage them to relax and just focus engaging with God through the spirit whether that be in English or any other way, um, and then don't get pressured because some people find it harder because they're striving for it or that they feel, oh, why me? Why haven't I got it? And therefore, is there something wrong with me or am I lesser than somebody else? You know, and therefore you've got that sort of way of thinking and looking at it. Um, so if someone relaxes, just enjoys god's presence then they can be much more in a place of rest and therefore it's easy to communicate when you're in a place of rest and peace you know if you're frantic if you're anxious worried concerned then often the soul is what's communicating rather than through the spirit when we become one then our spirit soul and body can operate you know seamlessly in union but that takes a process of you know, relational connection and, and also deconstruction and renewing of our minds, you know, because often we'd be praying out of a mindset, which is not actually how God really thinks. So God does a lot of working us to get us to the point where we can communicate um, in the right mindset, you know, without fear, without worry, without anxiety, without thinking the wrong way about God. Sometimes people are praying to God because they're afraid of him. They're almost pleading with God because they really don't think they're worthy enough. There's lots of things which can hinder communication. And God really wants to reveal the truth of who he is in our relationship with him. So we can experience that joy and peace and love in relationship without the you know, wrong view of God motivating in the way we pray or what we do and how we are. Um, so I would encourage, you know, your friend to relax and uh, don't strive and just operate in grace and mercy and love and just rest if they're at rest then they're much more able to receive and give in terms of communication
and trying to hear God or trying to speak to him. And is he hearing me? Well, of course he's hearing you. He's, he's, he's in us all. So, you know, he knows everything what that we're engaging with. So there's no, there's no need to stress over it all, but mm. ultimately, you know, people have to go through a journey to get to that place of rest. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. That's very helpful. So I only came to God properly about 16 months ago and I've been through a very, wild journey and it's been amazing and about eight months ago would i was part of this little charismatic team i suppose of people and there was a girl getting delivered of some things and i started wailing and weeping i had no idea what was going on yeah and then i thought to myself i sit in the game mate shut up there's nothing wrong with you like why are you getting involved in this and i just couldn't stop weeping and then Someone said to me it was travailing, but then on Saturday night, I, I, I was actually at the Westfield when the guy got shot the other night. Oh, wow. And I could, all these people came running at me and I just felt God's peace. You know, I was, I just yeah. casually got up, grabbed my things, walked out and felt that I had to just go and speak with people and just make sure they were okay. Mm. But when I got home, I let out this almighty yelp in the shower. Or what was it was in the in I just it was so weird. It wasn't me yeah. at all. And I was just sitting there going, Wow, I just don't even kind of know what that is. But I was just like grateful. And then I the next morning I started watching video and you're talking about the cry of the father's heart. I'm just like, mm -hmm. okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. Um yeah, <laughs> I mean, some sometimes we we operate outside of cognitive understanding and particularly mm. when the spirit is is engaged in a way that isn't our soul um and when we're in a position that, like that where fear could take place or whatever you know you can you can be in a place of rest at, mm. in the eye of the storm if you like you know yeah. it doesn't mean there aren't storms going around yeah but in that place of rest in the midst of the storm then our spirit is able to engage in a supernatural place of peace mm. but sometimes then you know the the spirit can groan it can cry there can be a travail you know but mostly that is the result of the soul who is feeling and sensing the things that are going on in the world mm. god isn't panicked god isn't travail yeah. God is that's what I was sitting there going, oh, you know. But yeah. if we can feel compassion and we can be moved by that compassion, and that's not necessarily a wrong thing. It it's was just very different yeah. for me. Like I, there was I, there was definitely the soulish part, and I was feeling that before. This one was I felt like I was deeply crying, but my eyes yeah. were normal, and I was like looking down, going, What's going yeah. on here? Yeah. But um, sometimes sometimes the spirit does intercede because oh, yeah, what you're sense. doing when you're engaging with god you're learning and we're all learning only to do what we see the father doing mm. and sometimes the father reveals things to us in a heart-to-heart -heart cardiogenosis way mm. not in a mind way so we don't understand actually what it is but our soul and spirit are engaging it from yeah. from that perspective so often when god re reveals something it is a heart-to-heart -heart revelation and then sometimes later i'm talking about something um sharing something and all of a sudden i start sharing something that i've never really said before but where did that come from but it came out of the revelation that i received from god heart to heart mm. at the time i didn't understand in my mind I didn't yeah. have understanding in that way, but when I needed it, the understanding was there. Sometimes our body and our soul isn't capable of, of fully embracing what our spirit yeah. is engaging. And therefore there can be a reaction. Yeah. Sometimes okay. People's body goes to sleep. Yeah. Or people's body trembles or shakes because yeah. they don't have the... <laughs> the sort of grid of reference for what's happening yeah but sometimes things that do that i mean i found myself on the floor i found you know in the past i've sort of been squatting down almost giving birth to something like, what am i doing 
this isn't me because I'm not particularly an extrovert. Therefore, yeah, I'm yeah. doing things that make me really uncomfortable. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Yeah. But it was because I was engaging in the spirit and my soul didn't get in the way. Mm. Or sometimes my spirit just overwhelmed the soul in such a way that it just took charge. Yeah. You know, and sometimes when there is a fearful situation, the spirit does rise up yeah. and empowers us in that situation to act outside of what normally we may have done or what other people are reacting. Mm. And there may be that what you've contained or received, sometimes just there is an expression Mm. but maybe a yelp or maybe a cry yeah. that just is just like almost relief yeah yeah just gets released from <laughs> sort of experience within you know some yeah. of these things they're just they're not always easy to define or understand but you know whether they're good or bad by mm. how you feel as a result yeah. of what's going on and you know, when they're when you just feel, well, I don't know where that came from, but there was no sense of foreboding or whatever about yeah, it. You just yeah. gotta say, Hey, I don't understand it, but hey, it was good. <laughs> yeah. it's good. It's all right. If God wants me to know, he'll he'll tell me one day and I'll pr I may understand in the future of what happened in the past. And it's I've, funny explaining that to the person in the other room, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And sometimes you just think, I don't know, it was an emotional experience and something yeah. something gave. Yeah. something gave way or something and and it, and something came out you know yeah. and that can be awesome. what happens i mean often dreams are an expression of what is going on in the soul that comes out during a dream mm. maybe a cry or a yelp can be a release of something that's inside um that we can't categorize necessarily at the time but often i found even years later that I can then define an experience differently because I'm in a different place. Mm. You know, I can only engage what I'm experiencing in the present with my present level of cognitive understanding. Mm. But my cognitive understanding will have changed in the future. Therefore, then I can look back at experiences with a different framework and a different reference Presence point yeah. and explain yeah. them differently. Yeah. You know? awesome yeah thank you <laughs> what else we got We've got more people yeah okay all right hello mike hi trish how are you doing i'm good hello everyone i've come back to meet new faces what's going on here <laughs> well we just we just opened it up for a few more people to join so okay. you know, so it's nice to connect with different people so. wow you're all welcome yeah <laughs> thanks how are you mike i'm great thanks yeah really good you re you look great yeah i'm good yeah we just sort of came back from a, a three-week tour of vietnam cambodia and thailand wow. um so that was that was you know an experience uh which i really enjoyed um um yeah so yeah just just Back, getting back to the normal routine of life you know it was quite hot over there and actually very interesting countries um, and i wanted to i wanted to explore how as countries they'd handled the things that have happened to them in the past by the vietnam war or the Khmer rouge in cambodia and the, and you know the, the terrible things that happened in the country um, at that point and so I, I i found it really interesting to talk to people and pick up on the spiritual dynamic that was going on and and i was very encouraged that these people have moved on they're not living in bitterness or resentment of the past you know they've moved forward um they're uh wanting to move on and and, and you know it was it was encouraging that there was forgiveness they talked about forgiveness you know, not holding anything against anybody, you know, and, and it was very interesting to, to have that demonstrated, um, in a very practical way. We went to the killing fields outside of Phnom Penh in, uh, Cambodia. And it was where a quarter of the population basically were wiped out. Uh, and during the period of 74 to 79, um, you had Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge, 
who were literally killing anyone who was educated or in any way like that. And our guide took us to there and shared his own experiences. And he is, his brother, who was six at the time, um, was killed it by this particular tree, which we were looking at, by having his head smashed against the tree while his mother was watching. You know, and his uncle, who was a doctor, uh, was tricked into admitting he was a doctor. Then they killed him. His elder sister was also murdered. You know, and you know, I was like, how do you manage to share this every day with people? And the answer was because of forgiveness, because, you know, I'm not holding it against those people. You know, and, and I was very encouraged by that because that to me was more of a demonstration of God's and how God operates in unconditional love than how we would probably operate in a retaliation way in our western mindset and way of looking at it uh, and that was very encouraging to to see and the countries were primary buddhist and buddhism at, in its essence is not really a religion so much as a philosophy of life and it operates very much in a, a base of well giving karma if you like sowing and reaping you know therefore they realize that actually retaliating to something is just not going to be beneficial and they live it out so that was quite interesting to see as a nation and nations how they have dealt with and faced the dynamic that they went through um you know and whenever i travel you know i like to leave a deposit of something good there um, and i'm always conscious you know we went to lots of temples in al Kawat and different things and there was no real religious sort of negativity about it. It was just, you know, architecture and from the past and stuff. Um, but it was always good to say, well, millions of people are going to visit these places. It's great that my intention within those places is that people will find a place of peace and rest and and ultimately get drawn to God through that. You know, so although, you know, I enjoy you know, visiting places, I also feel that if if I if I'm walking there, and my intention is to leave something deposited there of God's love, then hopefully that will be felt and experienced by people who are there. So, yeah. So that's sort of where I've, I've been for a few weeks and then enjoying the the warmth of 37 degrees, uh, which was quite warm. Uh, but, you know, having a great time, you know, it, was, it wasn't a holiday, you know, because we were traveling and visiting places every day. So it was a tour. Um, but really interesting. Met a lot of interesting people, um, a lot of people interested in asking questions. And, you know, because we ended up talking about, you know, what I'm doing and various things and who God really is. And and there was a lot of really interesting questions um, about the nature of God and the difference between religion and relationship with God and everything. And that, that was great because it gave me an opportunity of sharing and talking and you know, in a natural environment and people were interested to ask about that. So that was great as well. So I really enjoyed that. So, yeah. Wow. Mike, how do you make that deposit? When you say I make this deposit of love and peace, like how, how do you do that practically? Basically just by intention. Through intention, I am, I'm leaving essentially a part of myself there, if you like. My, the intention I have for others to receive blessing, to receive love, I want that intention to be a frequency that's within the fabric of the places I go. So if I was to speak, that memory of the frequency of my voice would be retained within that. Um, if I do something, it would also be kept within the fabric of material. It's like, you know, if you have a, a CD or a DVD, you have a piece of material that contains music, sound, or or vision things. How? Because it gets sort of written into the fabric of that material. And that actually is possible to do in any material, in any physical location. Now, we know some locations feel good and some locations feel quite dark. Why? Because there's memory retained of things that have happened in the past in those locations. And we can seek to do that in a positive sense 
just by choosing that intentional uh, focus of I am going to leave a deposit here of love for people in the future to maybe experience. And my focus and my intention is for that to take place. Therefore, it takes place. I could make declarations into the, but I, but my physical thoughts are just the same as what I say. And my thinking it is the same as speaking it. And my thoughts have vibrational frequency, which engages the location because of my desire and intention to do so. It doesn't have to be very complicated. It's quite simple, but you have to be able to focus that intention and choose to do it, which is, you know, something that I you know, feel is part of, you know, what I do when I travel. And I like traveling and I like seeing places. And I always feel if I'm going to somewhere new, I have an opportunity. Sometimes that might be meeting people and talking to people. Sometimes that might just be I'm going to sort of engage this place for whatever this place needs, whatever this culture needs, whatever the people of this culture might need. Because, you know, a lot of you know what I saw in those people, they were very loving people. They were very caring people, but they don't necessarily know Jesus yet. But they're operating quite often in a lot better way than a lot of Christians operate. So in a sense, they're they are connected to God and sort of connected to God in a, in a way of connecting to love and his character, but doesn't know him in a personal way. So my desire is that they would awaken to who God really is and not just get stuck in the philosophy, you know, um, and therefore, you know, I went to temples and Buddhist temples and some Hindu temples. You know, and actually, you know, in those places, you know, we went to some big Buddhas, lying Buddhas and sitting, you know, the smiling Buddha and the standing Buddha and stuff. And so I'm imparting into those statues because they're just statues. So if something if, if someone doesn't impart something into them, they're just statues, which people can then use in any way they choose. But if there's something in within them, there's an opportunity of that being released to people when they look to engage it and they do people were engaging things in a way which i didn't need i felt any need to engage personally myself but i felt here's a place where people are seeking therefore if they're seeking i want them to find the truth you know so that that experience that they get will maybe be part of their journey towards discovering who god really is um rather than just sort of picking up on some things that god is in that sense of love and forgiveness and how you deal with life you know and you know the sense of i've deposit truth there so some of what i'm looking to do is to deposit the truth within the fabric of those beings temples pagodas places um and that truth if people are seeking truth they may have a revelation of truth. They might be seeking a, a favor of Buddha or whatever, or Shiva or whatever else they might be looking at. But actually, Jesus is the truth. So I want that deposit of truth to be there so that people may be able to find truth. Because sometimes people, I mean, people have met God on acid trips in all sorts of ways. You know, now that that's not promoting acid trips or saying, well, that's a good way of meeting God. But God will meet people where they are. And I believe a lot of people who are seeking, you know, that spiritual dimension to life, they need to find the real truth in it. So that's the sort of thing I do in terms of leaving a deposit of my desire that people would respond to the real truth when they're seeking in a spiritual way. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> I I I have taken a lot from that. I like that. Um mm. why when you were talking, I'm thinking, do you rewrite the mindset there? Like, do you speak about Christ into those statues? Do you how do you leave your frequency there? How do you leave your DNA there? Well, it's just it is just my intention and focus into that material with my mind and choosing the reality 
that actually there will be a deposit of truth within it. And sometimes I might go and touch it if you're allowed to. In some of the things, you could actually touch some of the things. So from that perspective, you know, I would impart something. I would impart truth through touch. But sometimes you can't get close enough or they won't let you do that. So therefore, I would just do it by my thoughts and intentions and leave a deposit. Um, looking for people to discover the real truth in their pursuit of whatever it is they're looking for. You know, because it's quite superstitious in a way. You know, there's quite a lot of superstition in how they're looking for favor or they're looking for good luck. You know, and I'm, I'm the, well, you know, I don't want them to be based on luck. I want them to discover something of substance, of truth, which, you know, is, is you know, what I tend to try and to do. And it may be years before that brings fruit, or it may be something which is bit by bit in someone's journey. If something was triggered in them to pursue something or seek something, then I know God will be leading them on that journey to reveal himself. Yeah, we, we used to we used to operate a ministry in Uganda. Um, and I've sort of been in Tanzania and Uganda and Kenya. Um, I, I flew from Kenya to Tanzania by Mission Aviation Fellowship plane, which was quite interesting, um, which they took us in this small plane uh, down into Tanzania. But yeah, yeah, I've sort of been to Africa quite a number of times in the past. We, we ran a initially engaged with an orphanage or orphanages to help sort of AIDS orphans in, in Uganda, but then went on to develop a vocational training center because we, we struggled to, to um, the orphanage setup just wasn't working. And so we then, we got a piece of land and we, we built a vocational training center to educate people in skills for jobs and life and we would then send them back to villages with sort of abilities to farm or do other things that they sort of lost touch with. Um, so that was, you know, that's, and it's still going, you know, we, I sort of uh, handed it over to other people, but yeah, it's still going in, in Uganda. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, been, I'm glad you've opened this up. I've been listening to the messages online and I'm really grateful for um, the message of God's love that um, yeah, you're always um, um, talking about. Yeah. yeah, so I'm really blessed to be here. It's great to have you. Is there anything you want to ask? Any questions you've got? Um, not for now, but um, I'm really enjoying the discussion that we were having about um, just learning to, because uh, because it's something that I've been practicing myself to leave a deposit or to impart god's love and to impart um, who i am yeah. in the different places that I'm, I'm at for me especially at work um like you've said when i travel and things like that so i'm really enjoying this discussion i i, I don't have any questions for now that's okay no problem hmm. i think what you were saying about the intention and the impartation is it's been helpful for me um lately i guess like within the last year I've been sensing a lot of the fact like to not talk, to not speak out loud and just be, be like, use my spirit to, to pray or to speak or to impart or whatever it is, however I'm feeling led by the spirit. And, yeah. you know, I know we all go through like different seasons and I, and I feel like this is a season for me where I'm just learning to be more intentional with my spirit um, as I'm connecting with the, the father heart of God. And so, yeah, it just makes a lot of sense kind of where I am right now. Um, I just been, yeah, I just echoed Esther Been really grateful for um, just the things I've been learning as I've, I think I found you through some like uh, Justin Paul Abraham stuff and you, oh, right, you started yeah. popping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a good friend. And, That's and, me too. I found it through Justin Paul. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, and one of the things that really struck me, I like an aha moment. Because you were, I think it was like the number nine, like unconditional love. Uh, mm -hmm. You started with talking about how you began feeling this um, figure eight, the infinity mm -hmm. symbol, yeah. like that sensation. And um, 
probably within I started maybe like two, two and a half years ago, I would start feeling that in my spirit. And then I would start moving my hand that way. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I know, I know there's a spirit. I know what I'm doing. I know I'm doing yeah. something. But I don't know what I'm doing. And when I heard that, I was like, I think you said, if I, if I'm quoting you right, it was like connecting your heart to the father heart of God or something. You can correct me. But I was just like, you know, an aha moment. I was like, I'm so grateful for these videos. I'm like, they just what I'm experiencing as you talk about it, your experiences and just things link up. It's really, really been helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did the same thing when when I was on my journey, really, um, I found whenever I was in in a sort of setting where I could just let go it was usually in a worship setting or something at the time, I would find my hand just drawing this sign, you know, and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, and it was it was a bit weird. And but I just sort of went with it because I was like, OK, I don't really care what anyone else thinks about it. I'm just going to go with it. And eventually it was like, OK, God began to show me that I was connecting. And he was he was unveiling sort of an understanding of where I was in the beginning, if you like, in the origin of my identity in God, then bringing that into the present and out working that in the present to create the future. So and that's a continual pathway that we draw from where we are in the sort of relationship with god in the eternal now of that sort of intimacy with god outwork that in the present and that then will out bring the future into place because you know if i do that today that's history um and i can today essentially establish the future for me tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be another day you know i will get to tomorrow but what I do today can be preparing for tomorrow out of what was. So what was, what is and what will be. And he was showing me that this is the, you know, some people talk about the, the end and the beginning of a circle. And they said, well, you know, and the end of one thing is always the beginning of another, which is true. But actually, God said, no, it's not a circle. It is this sign of my eternal covenant with man that we were predestined to return to face-to-face -face relationship and that relationship will then enable us to outwork who we are in that state of being so what was what is i can just be and i learned you know i was very active because i'm quite an active person i like to do stuff you know and i was very active in well what am i doing today and how am i outworking today and it became more of a sort of I'm doing a lot of stuff. Um, but God brought me back from that place to say, it's not about what you're doing today. It's who you are today. It's your state of being has more impact in just what you do, because what you do can be out of a need or a desire or something, which is not necessarily coming out of the heart of God. But if you're flowing from what was and essentially is always is you know because god is always in that eternal state then that can actually in mean i can be so i started doing and i eventually became someone that could be and that was really a uh, a liberating thing because it really meant you know i only have to be in relationship with the father connected to his heart and that will motivate me and inspire me to outwork his heart every day but I don't have to be, what are we going to do today? What should I be doing today? And what do I need to do today? I just need to be me. Because if I am me, that will make room for the outworking of me in any situation. And I can therefore be much more relaxed and at peace and at rest without always thinking, well, what should I be doing? And what is there to do? And God, what are you doing? It's like, it's a heart to heart sort of relationship rather than or I want a list of things I should be doing today. And God did give me a list of things in the beginning because he took me where I was, but he didn't let me stay there. He didn't let me continue to, or what are we going to do today? Because one day he just stopped doing anything and just embraced me. And that was it. I was stuck there in an embrace struggling really. Cause it's like, well, I'm not doing anything, you know, but he was showing me that actually being in that oneness was way way more important than what i thought i should do because being 
enable the flow rather than a duty or obligation or what I thought I should do. And just because I know how to do something doesn't mean I do it. And God has demonstrated that lots of times in the, you know, I know how to do certain things. And when certain things were happening, I would go to God and say, oh, you know, can I do something here? You know, and he'd be like, no, no, it's all right. I got it covered. Yeah. Someone else is doing something, you know, and I actually then found and discovered who the people were who were doing it later on, which, which was great. Because then I realized, yeah, those people, God was already at work in here. He didn't need me. But if he did ask me to do something, great, that would be good. But I know it will be coming out because I'm feeling his heart about it. You know, and actually sometimes feeling his heart about a situation, but not having any sort of sense that I should do something doesn't mean I have to be passive because I can still be encouraging others who God does have to do it in a way, you know, because in a sense, you know, when we're connected in the spirit, because we're all one in the spirit, then my encouragement can help somebody else to feel secure in what they're doing. So, you know, my heart would be not, oh, wish I was doing that, but actually, how can I help encourage whoever is doing that? So that they are able to do that in, you know, the way God would want them to do it. So my thoughts are always that way. You know, I'm part of a whole and God has got many, many different ways of doing things, you know. Um, and of course, we can be doing things in the spirit without necessarily needing to know what we're doing cognitively. And, you know, I'm doing that all the time. That's that's a, a state of being sort of multidimensional and doing things in many different places, doing many different things without the need to be there in a conscious way because my spirit is there all our spirits are seated in heavenly places with christ it's just we haven't learned mostly to engage it but we're there so our spirit has been active and is active even if we're not aware of what we're doing but we can become more aware as our soul and spirit begin to learn how to engage until we don't need to you know you know i can engage right now with wherever i might be doing something in the spirit realm but most of the time i don't need to because actually that gives me more time to be here in a way that enables me to be at peace and be at rest here and be a a sort of demonstration of that if you like and to live it out and to have a more creational perspective to it you know so i you know i would be doing so much stuff in the spirit realm that the earthly realm you know, almost was of secondary importance. And God really showed me the value of this realm and living here and out working here, who we are there, you know, on earth as it is in heaven, um, in a way that made me much more connected to creation. I had more time to feel and sense what was going on around me. Whereas before I would be spending so much focus on what I was doing in heaven almost you know the earthly stuff seemed to be secondary important but actually it is creation that's waiting for the revealing of the sons of god and is looking to be set free um and therefore there is a a, a sort of aspect of our sonship which is very much looking at the restoration of how god intended things to be here um and you know i found that my having more of a relaxed way of living with the with the creation around me enabled me to tune into that more and feel more of that groan and sense what was going on and sometimes even the earth groans at what we do to it and what we're doing to ourselves and you tend to find physical things happen in the world when things happen people wise you know and and there's a disturbance if you like which we can bring peace into you know we don't want natural disasters so-called to follow our human disasters uh if we can if we can bring peace into that so that there isn't a reaction to it from the earth 
and from you know the planet that we live on and and there's you know a lot of stuff going on as we were talking earlier stuff in in sydney right now obviously we've got israel we've got ukraine we've got the yemen we've got you know somalia and various places where lots of things are happening that i believe as mm. sons of god we have the ability to bring peace into even if there's not the external peace that's going on between people we can reconcile that with the earth so that there's not an earthly reaction to what's happening and i think that's really important that we we are peacemakers now it would be great if we could bring peace into every environment um, but certainly we can definitely bring a peace between the the earth the creation that we're in and you know what is going on in a negative sense just to touch on what you are sharing it's really difficult when um it feels like he's winning you off being um there all the time so you will start doing practical things and i i mean someone for me in in Who's, my husband is not on this on this path with me. So it was good that I'm able to detach and come on the earth and do things on the earth a bit more. Mm -hmm. But it was very hard for me, extremely hard for me in the beginning. And so just to encourage others that it will get hard, but it's all good. I remember when I was going to Ghana and I, I was saying to you, he's not asking me to do anything. The Lord is not saying anything. And it was... Mm -hmm. I was really getting disturbed about that. And then you said it could be about family. And I I still was like, no way. You can't make me go to Ghana and not do anything. But I understood later that he just wanted me to go and be with family. Mm. And the things that came out of that were really uh, um, incredible experiences that I had there. In the end, people like this, you can't come and go without doing anything. So we did a little retreat at the end, but <laughs> it was just him wanting me to be with family. And sometimes it's very hard to detach yourself from, you know, having been in his presence for so long. It's really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And coming back, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just want to be here more. And, but then I'm sent off to do something else. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's a yeah the experience we, we can underestimate the power of of just being and you know, having the love of god flowing through us having rivers of living water of creating an atmosphere that when we come into a situation we bring peace we bring love you know we administrate it even if on the surface nothing seems to be happening and we're not doing anything we are being we are being that expression um and love is a powerful force you know and we can be uh, a, a demonstration of love how we just interact with people how we care for people all the things but generally it isn't just that either it's just the frequency of love that we carry can impart and touch people's lives you know um and i think we shouldn't uh, underestimate that because you know there's a lot of works-based mentality and performance orientation within christianity and in with life you know that we need to you know not be pursuing and chasing after certain things but living from the relationship we have with god um which you know is is an unconditional relationship it's not based on our performance it's based on his love and that love never fails so if we embrace that then we're not pressured you know we don't have to you know we can just be and relax you know just relax in that being yeah what you were saying was reminding me of when i began my journey with my relationship with the Holy Spirit, um, coming into like a more spiritual group of people uh, mm -hmm. through the Vineyard Church, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I remember I'd always be like, you know, I would make myself available to God. I'm like, God, are you doing anything? God, are you doing anything? God, are you doing anything? And whenever I was like that, I would never hear anything, never have any opportunities. <laughs> but then I, one time I was just 
at a restaurant with my friends, not thinking about anything like that. And all of a sudden he shows up and wants me to like pray for this, our waitress. And mm. I just didn't realize, you know, I don't have to try so hard. <laughs> yeah. Just you're always available. If you're available, you're always available. And yeah, so that was just a good lesson for me to realize and continue to learn. Like, like what you're saying, just relax, just, just be, be yourself, be who, who God has created you to be. Just be. And that's yeah, it is. something I'm working on. Yeah. yeah. And, and actually God can use you in being without you actually necessarily even needing to do anything physically. You know, it's like, sometimes it's, Oh, you know, Oh, it's, it is good when you when you you know can see the result of something or you see, but often just your presence can be a force for good, a, a peaceful environment. Whenever I go to somewhere like a restaurant or whatever, my always my intention would be that there would be peace in that place, that there would be no tension, that it would would be that the staff would enjoy what they're doing, that the people would enjoy the atmosphere that you know, just have that positive attitude towards life, you know, and be positive in a, in a, in a way without necessarily having to do anything, but having the attitude that releases that, you know, I expect to go into a room and that room to become peaceful without me having to say anything, but I, but that is my expectation because I carry peace. I'm a peacemaker. So why wouldn't I expect that if I'm in a place, the atmosphere of that place will change? And sometimes I feel tension. I feel that which contradicts that sense of peace and rest. And therefore, it will be like, OK, then I can intentionally, I'm going to release peace. But most of the time, it's just the way I am. You know, I have that full expectation that if I go into a place, then peace will be there, that that place will be a place of rest and joy. You know, it's the, the, there's a joyfulness about life, you know, and people sh should enjoy it. And some people don't enjoy life, you know, and having that place of peace and, and knowing you're loved from unconditionally by God, you know, enables life to be a joyful experience. I don't have to earn anything, prove anything to anybody or, or God. Uh, God loves me. You know, I know that. Therefore, I can operate from that. You know, that is how I, we can all live from that sense of we are loved. You know, he if if we know that we're loved, then we are accepted and approved of and valued. And those that sense of stuff, which inwardly is it brings you to that place of rest. You know, I know God accepts me. Therefore, it's not my behavior one way or another that makes a difference to God. He loves me because I'm his child. You know, he sees me the way he intended me to be. If I see myself that way, then I will begin to operate in that way because i will know that is who i am you know a lot of people don't know who they are so they're trying to find out who they are and most people try and find out who they are by doing something yeah you know? and that can wear you out yeah you know, if you're constantly trying to find peace rather than being at rest in that sort of peaceful environment and setting so yeah Mm. okay yeah those activations mike they yeah. just between those and the unconditional love and your psa videos yeah yeah just totally changed so mm. many things and it's allowed a lot of healing to come up in my life as well you know like it's been really really good and just literally two hours a day sometimes mm. they're guided other times i'm listening to the alberto rivera's or what their music and yeah. uh, it's just, you know, that's what I, I want everyone to have that now, guys, the peace, come and enjoy the yeah. peace, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, enjoy, it's, in, it's enjoying life in that way, you know? Mm. Uh, and sometimes we just don't give ourselves the space to be still, you know, and to know God. And it, it, it isn't for me, 
you know, I have to be doing nothing, but I carry the same attitude, whether I'm in the garden or I'm in my workshop or whether I'm, whatever I'm doing, I still have that. I am being still here and therefore at rest in that and enjoying what flows from knowing God, you know, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a wonderful way. I, you know, it's w wish wish I knew it thirty years ago. <laughs> you know, in the way I know it now, but it's a journey to get there. And you know, exactly. and I praise God and thank God for the way in which He's navigated me through all of the way th of life to get me to this place of, you know, joyfulness. Really, if you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much